On today's show, we're going to check out the new-ish Rode VideoMic Pro Plus and compare it to my trusty sidekick, the Shure VP83. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. Incidentally, the Monday show, I'm going to start making that a regular afternoon show. A lot of different reasons for that, but we're going to do the after do the Monday show in the afternoon starting probably when I get back from India. We'll figure out the time. It might be like a 1 or 2 or 3 p.m. I don't quite know yet, but that's going to shift a little bit. So for those of you international, we'll give you hopefully an opportunity to watch the uh, the show if this time zone or if this time slot doesn't exactly fit well for you um, and catch it live. And it makes my life a little bit easier as well. So um, with that said, let's get this thing on the road. Today we are comparing microphones. So this is the Shure VP83. I've been using this mic for a couple of years now. I did a big comparison comparing this to an older Rode, to a Sennel mic um, and the internal mic on a GH4. That's how long ago it was. It was on the GH4. And the Shure and the Rode were both great. They both sounded essentially equally awesome. I chose the Shure for its form factor. It was a kind of a narrow profile, smaller mic overall. I just I just kind of like the feel of it better. But now we skip ahead a few years and Rode has come out with a new microphone. And this is not new today. It's been out for a little while, but it's the first time I've got my hands on it. This is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. This is the newest version of it. And it's got some pretty sweet features in it. And so I was very intrigued wanted to get my hands on it again and compare it to the Shure. So we're talking about a couple different types of comparisons here. We're going to compare physical size and weight and so on. We're going to compare features and then we are of course going to compare sound quality as well. So with that said, let me start off with the two negatives, the two downsides that I don't like about this mic. And I'm going to start with the two downsides because from there it's just all uphill. I'm Spoiler alert, I'm really, really liking this mic, but there are two things about it that I'm not super thrilled about. So let's get those out of the way. To start, it's the size. When you see the size comparison between the two, the Rode is definitely a larger, physically larger microphone. It's a wider profile. Even with the dead cat on the Shure, it is still a larger mic. And if I take the dead cat off, then it really, the Shure really does show itself to be quite a bit smaller. Now, I have found that the dead cat is I don't want to say a necessity, but it's something that I always like to have on the mic. I never take it off, but here we're taking it off. You can see it's my mic's looking a little bit flaccid there, isn't it? Um, but now compare the size, it is a dramatic, dramatic size difference. So that's the first thing. I like this lower profile, smaller microphone, which I'm not going to have anymore with this. The second thing is a little bit more important though. If you're shooting like so, you know, looking at the back of the LCD, down here, up here, whatever, this next part isn't a problem. But if you like to shoot like this, and I actually do shoot with the camera to my eye quite a bit, both for video and for still, and if I'm shooting both video and stills with my GH5 or the G9 or whatever, I'm not going to take the mic off just because I'm shooting stills, right? I'm still just going to pick up the camera and do this. Well, with this microphone, this is no problem. But notice this microphone. Look at the design of it. The plug sticks out the back. Overall, the microphone sticks off the back of the camera more. Even forget about the plug for a moment. But as soon as you put that plug on there, now you've got something that I, I actually cannot get my eye all the way up to the screen, not without kind of kind of wiggling my way in there. And so that I'm I'm definitely not thrilled about. I really, really wish this plug was on the side. At least if the plug was on the side, you know, this would still bump my forehead a little bit, but it would be okay. But sticking this thing out of the back, that is definitely an issue. So I'm not too happy about that. But that's that's where the dissatisfaction ends. Let's move on with the things that are great about it. So just some straight up comparisons. Um, the weight of the two. When I first got this in my hands, the Rode, I thought, this is a considerably lighter weight microphone than the Shure. And I, I was like, am I tricking myself? What is it? So I weighed them. It turns out, without the dead cat, they're virtually identical. 160 grams versus 161 for the Shure. So one gram heavier for the Shure with the dead cat. You add the dead cat, it goes up to 175. So barely, you know, another 15 grams. So barely anything. So really the, the mic weights are comparable. This one is a little bit lighter than this with the cat. They're identical without. Um, but because it's bigger, I guess, because it is a bigger object with the same weight, I kind of had this illusion that it was a lighter weight microphone. So I really had to put them on the scale to figure that out. But, um, but yeah, it is, it is the same weight as these two, sorry, same weight on their own. Wow, uh, this one's a little bit heavier with the dead cat on it. So that's the first one. Um, high pass filter. Both microphones have a high pass filter and we're going to look at how to set all this up on the Rode mic in a moment here. The Shure has a single high pass filter. It 
cr it cuts off at 175 hertz. The Rode has two high pass filters. You can choose between the settings. It's got 150 hertz and a 75 hertz option. So you have other options in there. Now I tried to do some tests comparing them and I couldn't find the right kind of sounds to cut out. So in the test that we will be looking at in a little bit here, we're not going to hear any of that. But if you are an audiophile person and you know that that certain frequency is better for what you're doing, then that's great if you know that you've got 50 or 100, or sorry, 75 or 150 here versus 175 here. That could be good for you to know. I don't have a good comparison for you, but just information, just so you know on that. Uh, both have physical gain switches on them to go from your standard, we'll call it zero, to plus 20 and minus 10. So both of them have that built into this. So that's where the feature comparison that's the same kind of ends. Then we get into the things that the road has that are really, really cool. So let's just get rid of this for now and let's start looking at the road. First of all, let's take a look at the back of the microphone here. You can see the layout on here. You've got a power button up there and then buttons to enable the high pass toggle through that and the DB rating to go between the plus 20 and the minus 20. Then if you press and hold the power and one of these buttons at the same time, you can enable different things. So let's go through a couple of these because this is, this is pretty cool. Now, the first major, major feature on this mic that got me really interested. There's two major features. The first major, major feature that got me excited was I heard, I had been told, that this microphone, when you plug it into the camera, will automatically turn on when the camera turns on, turns off when the camera turns off. I'm thinking, well, that is crazy cool, right? Because how many times have you flipped on the mic on your camera, you go out for a day of shooting, you set the camera down, whether it's just for a few hours overnight and you forget to turn off the mic. You wake up, the battery's dead or at least way more depleted, right? No bueno, and this happens all the time to me because it's another thing to turn off. So when I heard about that feature in here, I was really excited. But then someone on this show said that, no, 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 it only happens when you plug the mic in, that's when it turns on. And that would lead you to believe that to turn it off, you had to unplug it. And I thought, well, that's just a total waste, that's silly. Turns out that is not actually the case. The mic does turn itself off and on as the camera either goes to sleep or gets powered off, wakes up or comes back on again. So I'm just show that to you here. Let's go ahead and get this back on the close up and I'm going to turn the camera on. Oh, the camera was on. It's been off and asleep. So let's just turn it back on and boom. See that it just turned on. You saw the mic come, over, come on. I did not have to push the power button. I'm going to now turn the, the camera off and it takes, I think about five seconds or so. And then the microphone itself is going to turn off. There it goes. So you get the same thing, whether the camera is going to sleep or being powered off. But that right there to me was absolutely huge. So this is a great feature. I'm super excited to have that. Another thing that's related to the power on there is the LED light on the back here. So you got this blue LED light. Let me turn it back on, it'll power on in a second. There we go, the blue light on there on the power button. When this turns red, you have 10 hours of battery life left. 10 hours. When that goes red, you've got a whole day of shooting in front of you. When it starts to flash slowly red, you get two hours of battery life left. When it starts to flash quickly red, you've got 30 minutes of battery life left. So you have plenty of warning and you know how long that warning is when you start to see that. So if you see that red light come on, you've still got a whole day of shooting. Obviously you should charge it up when you can, but that's pretty fantastic right there. I'm, so I'm, I'm very happy to see that on there. The indicator on this was, uh, I don't even know what the timing was, but like at one color change and that's it and you're done. Speaking of the power on this thing, if you've ever used a Rode VideoMic Pro before, you know that getting the nine volt battery in and out of this thing was an utter nightmare. I don't know why they made the door so hard, but it was really, really hard to get into. This now has a much easier door to get open and closed, and it comes with a rechargeable battery pack. This is the rechargeable battery pack that it comes with. However, it is the exact same size as two AA. So you can power this thing with two AA's, or you can use the rechargeable pack. If you're using the rechargeable pack, slide that in there. Look at that, it's in, it's closed. For those of you who have the older version of this mic, you know how much of a relief that is. Um, there is a USB port on the side, plug it in, charge it up. So charge it from your computer, your iPhone charger, whatever. Same thing as you know, any other USB charging device. So there's that. Okay, let's get this mic back on here. And now that I've pulled the battery out of it and take the battery out, it definitely turns off. And let's take a look at some of the other settings on the back here. So you've got your high pass filter here. So as you would expect, you push that to toggle up between the 75, the 150 and off. Over here, the dB filter between plus 20, minus 10 or off. Now you'll notice something else here. See that little tiny indicator with the two different size lines on it and then the green light next to it. This gets into the second feature that I was really, really excited about. Now, as we're going to see when we get into the tests, it's not as critical as I thought it was but it's still an excellent, excellent feature to have. And that is that this microphone will record a safety track. 
these are mono microphones. When you plug them into a stereo camera like the GH5, you have your mono track split among left and right. So you get the same thing on the left and right channel. What this microphone will do when you enable the safety track feature is it will record on the left channel or right channel, I forget now which one, but anyway, the alternate, it'll record one at full strength and one at 10 decibels quieter. That's your safety track. So if there's some big peak, a yell, a clap, some loud noise that peaks out the mic, that peaks out your recording, you will have a safety track to go back to. Now, this does mean when you're editing, that you have to go into your edit your, um, in your editing software and enable it, switch it from stereo to mono or dual mono, disable the track that you don't want, but so it's a little bit more work, but you have that safety track. And having that safety track is absolutely phenomenally huge. To activate that, all you do is hold the power button and this button at the same time. Just press that and you see the safety track is now disabled. If I do that again, it will be enabled. Incidentally, the sleep, the auto sleep, you can turn that off as well. So if you don't want it to automatically go to sleep, you can turn that off as well. Okay, I think that's everything on the physical features that I wanted to go into. There's a couple other little things about it, but that's the critical stuff. Now let's get into an actual audio comparison. Um, before we do that, I want to remind you guys that the way that we operate on the show is by what we call a value for value proposition. That means if you feel like you have learned something today on this show, I would most certainly appreciate it if you consider putting some value back in. You can do that by going to photojoseph.com support. You can see all the different ways that we do that there, including becoming a member of photojoseph.com. As a member of photojoseph.com, you have access to unlimited streaming of all the live training, discounts and other stuff in the store, as well as the uh, business of the business interviews, which number three, I promise, is coming out very, very soon. And also access to a private Facebook group where only the members have access to. And it's just a way to communicate with a much smaller group of people and with me directly as well. So with that said, uh, let's move on. Okay, so we're now we're going to listen to the comparison test. Let's, uh, I'm going to keep switching back and forth between my camera here and uh, this video that I prepared and explain what's going on. So comparing the sound quality between the Shure VP83 and the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. First test, both mics and cameras have the same settings. Now, the, the Rode, just as it is, the Rode is recording about six decibels quieter, just setting everything equal. The Rode is about six dB quieter. So throughout this test, I have leveled out the levels in software, adjusted the gain in software, to make sure that the dialogue was at a consistent level. This is just a very real world type of a test. I'm not saying, oh, this camera records quieter, that, that doesn't, this mic records quieter, that doesn't actually matter. What matters is once we get them level, how the background noise is, how any peaking, clipping, and so on might be. Um, oh, incidentally, I forgot to say, if you're watching live, we are going to do the Q&A at the end, of course. If you're not watching live, then once you get to the end, you'll have access to the Q&A video. You'll see where that's linked to. Um, if you've got questions, make sure you put at Photo Joseph in front of them, and we'll get to those momentarily. Okay, so back to this. So the road records about six decibels quieter, so I have raised the road 6 dB or wherever it needs to be throughout this video test to compare. All right, let's have a listen. This is a test comparing the Shure VP83, which I've been using for a couple of years, and the new Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. So a couple things we're testing here. First of all is simply audio quality. How does it sound? Both are set to their neutral zero point. Both cameras are within arm's reach of me, so as if I was vlogging and holding the camera out in front of me. And the limiter is enabled on both cameras. Currently, the Rode is not set to record audio separately onto different channels at a different level with a safety track. We'll test that out in a moment. But for now, we're just listening to the straight up audio quality. Okay, so there you're just hearing the two mics compared. You can form your own opinions, obviously. For my use, I kind of think the Rode sounds better. Um, I think it's a little bit less background noise. It's a bit better isolating. It has a little bit more rounder tone to it. Uh, it's just, I just think it sounds a little bit better. So I was very pleased to see that. It's just mm, nice. It sounds a little bit better. All right, let's move on. So this next one is with a safety track. This is a safety track test. So we're recording both to the standard and to the minus 10 uh, dB on the other side. The limiter in the camera is still turned on. So in your camera, and this, this applies to basically any DSLR. Obviously, I'm using the GH5 here. You have a built-in microphone limiter, which is ideally going to prevent your microphone track from peaking, even if your audio does peak and the mic isn't limiting it, hopefully it's going to get limited in software in the camera. That's the idea behind it. So for the moment, we have the limiter still turned on in here. I also, in the edit, I switched the road track to dual mono so I could grab the single track that I needed. One of the things that that means when you go to dual mono and then you disable one of the tracks is you have to gain up that track because you no longer have two tracks playing back, you have to, you only have one. So right up, you're gonna have to raise it up another 6 dB. That's fine, that's just the way that it is. Um, so again, as I said before, 
the levels on these tracks are always level raised or lowered to make sure that they are even so the dialogue that's coming through is hitting the same audio levels. What we're listening to here is for peaking or clipping in the soundtrack. This next test is about the safety track. So on the road right now, we're recording with the safety track, meaning it's recording one channel at 10 decibels quieter, whereas on the Shure, we don't have that feature. The audio limiter is still enabled in both cameras. So now we're gonna find out is if I get loud, if I get too loud, if I shout, if I get too loud, if I get loud, if I get too loud, if I shout, if I get too loud, if I get loud, if I get too loud, if I shout, if I get too loud, is the Shure mic that has the limiter on the camera able to save us or do we need the safety track that is on the road? So what we just heard there was there was no peaking. So we didn't hear any peaking, any distortion. Now, this could be a combination of the limiter that's built into the camera or maybe just the mic wasn't quite loud enough. So what we're looking at now is the safety track test with the camera limiter is off. So I've disabled the limiter here. So the limiter was kicking in before. Now the limiter is turned off and we have that safety track enabled. So we're going to play this back and you're going to hear that there is no actual peaking or distortion. So this isn't test isn't going to show us much, but this is just what it sounds like with the limiter off. Now the limiter has been turned off in the camera. I can see both microphones are getting close to the top, but neither of them appear to be peaking. So I'm going to go ahead and crank them both up to plus 20 and repeat this test. Okay, so as I said earlier, we're gonna be repeating that test because when I just turned off the limiters, um, the mics were both set to zero. It just wasn't really loud enough to get any peaking in here. So for the next test, I take the microphones up to plus 20 and we still have uh, the limiter off. So here, both mics are at plus 20 now. Both microphones are now recording at plus 20. I can definitely see that the Shure is peaking. The limiter, of course, is off on the camera. Meanwhile, over on the road mic, the right channel is peaking, or rather the left channel is peaking, while the safety track on the right channel is not. Meanwhile, over on the road mic, the right channel is peaking, or rather the left channel is peaking, while the safety track on the right channel is not. All right, so here we learned a couple of things. First of all, the road mic with the non-safety track, the standard track, compared to the Shure mic, the clipping that was happening was much less dramatic. It was a much softer, it was still clipping, but it was a much softer clipping. Second, we learned that the safety track absolutely saved our bacon here because the safety track, that was the third one that we heard, sounded absolutely perfect. So we had that there as a fallback. But what I think is really interesting is that the hardware limiter that was built into the camera was doing such a good job before that now we want to find out, well, do we even need to have the safety track or is the limiter that's built into the camera, and again, here we're testing on the GH5, so I can't vouch for any other camera out there, but is the audio limiter that's built into the GH5 good enough? So we don't have to worry about the safety track. Let's find that out next. So the limiter is turned back on and both mics are still at plus 20. We are still at plus 20 on both microphones. However, I have re-enabled the limiter on the camera. So we are now really finding out how good the limiter on the camera is. Is it enough to save the Shure that should be peaking? Whereas the Rode, of course, has its own safety track that we can fall back on. So in there, I didn't even need to fall back on the safety track. Both microphones were at plus 20. Both cameras had the hardware uh, audio limiter enabled. And that basically what that meant was that we didn't need the safety track, right? The levels, the peaks that were should have been so loud, that were so distorted on the previous test, were no longer there. So the hardware limiter did an amazingly good job in the camera. That is phenomenal. The drawback, what we lost from this, or well gained technically, is the noise floor came up. So there's a lot more background noise. The good news is though, that we don't have the distorted peaks. So what I would say to that is that you still don't wanna just leave your camera at plus 20 all the time, your microphone at plus 20, because then like I said, your, your background noise gets raised up quite a bit more. But if you do have it at plus 20 accidentally, as long as you have your hardware limiter turned on in the camera, you may not have any peaks, you may not have a problem. That's pretty fantastic. So I, I thought that was pretty special. Okay, let's move on. So now a wind test. This next test is a wind test. Now, neither one of the microphones has a dead cat on them right now. We're gonna find out how good the foam is, the built-in foam, and then we'll compare that to the dead cat. Unfortunately, we do not have a windy day. We do, however, have cardboard. So here we go. And now for test part two for the wind. 
the shirt now has a dead cat on it, the road still does not because the people at Rhodes say that the foam is dense enough that you shouldn't need one unless you're in a really, really windy situation. So let's give it a try. It's funny, I can really see the fur moving on the dead cat. Again, I think a very interesting test. When neither microphone had the dead cat, we heard definitely heard more noise, more wind noise on the shirt. Once I put the dead cat on the shirt and compared them, it sounded the same. So I'm gonna say that the road without a dead cat is just as good at blocking noise as the Shure with the dead cat. Now you can get a dead cat for the road, of course, making it even better. And another cool feature that this has is when you do that, when you put a dead cat on there, you tend to lose some of the really high frequencies. So there is a high frequency booster in here. So if you put the cat on there, you can boost up the high frequencies to make up for some of that lost higher end uh, sound. So that's pretty cool. So what this tells me is again, I'm gonna go out now with this without the windsock where here I needed it. And um, I think I'm gonna have you know, just as good audio. And in many cases, I think actually better. Like I said earlier, I think, I think from my ears that it sounds a bit better. I'm very, very interested to hear what you guys think, which is exactly what we're gonna talk about in the Q&A. So we're about to start the Q&A. So for those of you watching live, as you know, just hit that, uh, hit the chat in there, put that photo just in front of it. So I know that there is a question or something to talk about and we will get you up on the screen in just a moment.